Hey everybody, Randy Arsenault here from IBM Product Management, and I wanted to take a few moments today to take you through the newest member of our portfolio, IBM Spectrum Fusion. We have spent a lot of time over the last few years looking out across the IT infrastructure world and the enterprise and multiple government agencies worldwide. And we've gathered a lot of information from customers about what's driving their demand and what's driving their investment and their thought process. In particular, every year, the IBM Institute for Business Value does a global survey of C-level executives to get a sense for where they're focused, where they're spending their time and energy and money, and what are the things that are driving their business forward. And last year, the top three responses in that survey probably not surprisingly, were IoT, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence. So these are the kinds of technologies and capabilities that organizations are looking to, to kind of maintain and sustain their competitive advantage in the new world. Tech maturity, however, is an issue with most of these. So while they're pretty well adopted within some of the more advanced and more innovative industries, they're a little bit harder to come by in some more kind of traditional industries. So we started trying to think about ways that we could address some of the barriers to entry and some of the things that create challenges for organizations trying to adopt these new technologies. So most organizations are undergoing some form of a transformation or modernization initiative. The challenge is that many of them are failing and you don't have to look very far in the trade press or industry press or even the Wall Street Journal and other places to find lots of horror stories about organizations that are investing millions in some cases, billions of dollars in these massive modernization initiatives only to see them fail, either scope creep, budget creep, or just kind of missing their expectations and goals altogether and sort of ending in disaster. We wanted to try to better understand why that was happening and what are some of the things that we could bring to market or bring to bear from our perspective to help resolve some of those issues. So we dug a little deeper and found, again, probably no surprise here, the things that are impacting these modernization initiatives are complexity. Typically, there's additional complexity that's brought in as the portfolio expands. Budget is always an issue. Most organizations are spending less or the same, and they're very, very constrained on budgets. And finally, a lot of these new cloud native workloads and hybrid multi-cloud workloads are driving a culture around development and DevOps and CI and CD workloads, for example, and, and tool patterns that are different for, for a lot of organizations. So adapting to this change is also proving to be pretty challenging. When you kind of boil those things down, what we find is that a lot of organizations have successful pilot programs. So for instance, they'll bring in OpenShift because they want to look at containerization as kind of a standard way to achieve a lot of these objectives. And they'll run a pilot program and it will go great. But as soon as they start to scale that application workload into a you know global scale production environment, it very quickly starts to expose vulnerability in their infrastructure structure, which in many cases was built to accommodate more traditional kind of multi-tier workloads. So this gradual journey or this migration from pilot program to successful production deployment is kind of fraught with issues and lots of delays and budget overruns and problems that can result in, in uh, real disruptions. So if we accept the premise that containerization and microservices are kind of becoming the new normal and the new de facto standard, we started to try to think about from a data management perspective, what are the things that are preventing containers from being more broadly and widely adopted? And it comes down to, in most cases, the data, again, probably not surprisingly, ways to consistently, securely, safely access enterprise data from within these new cloud native environments is difficult. It's very challenging. So organizations are looking ways to essentially deliver the same core data management and data, data services that they're accustomed to in their legacy environment, but adapted to the new cloud native containerization environment. So they need to have, of course, protected, secure, safe data. Applications have to be highly available, you know, with multi-zone availability and, and things of that nature. Obviously, security is critically important, especially now with all the cyber threats and, and other threat vectors that are attacking the data or looking to attack the data. And finally, of course, they want to achieve their business objectives. They want to reduce costs, they want to accelerate time to market, and they want to have a more open and agile and future-proof infrastructure. So as we started to think about this domain, we broke it down into some areas where we think we can apply technology from our portfolio, especially working in conjunction with our ecosystem partners and brothers at, at Red Hat, to alleviate the complexity challenges around multiple systems being brought together, multiple data sources, integration of existing workloads and data into new workloads and data environments. You know, how do we mitigate risk as we scale these things out, maintaining service and performance SLAs, providing highly resilient infrastructure, but at the same time, 
how do we create an environment that's able to maintain and bring those kind of long tail legacy workloads into this new environment in an efficient, repeatable, clean, secure way? So as we looked across those different domains, we came up with a concept of a solution that brings together kind of the, the core technologies from our storage portfolio, our data management portfolio, and combines it with the capabilities of Red Hat OpenShift. And we brought those together into a solution called Spectrum Fusion. So what we've come up with is what is best thought of as kind of a perfect deployment platform for any OpenShift application. And, and I'll talk a little bit about how this is delivered and consumed, but think about something that's a, a solution uh, that's very, very simple to deploy, can be brought into service in a day or less, can provide access to any data, any protocol, any source, anywhere, can deliver enterprise hardened security, performance, reliability. The solution is based on core technology or clustered file system that's used by most of the Fortune 1000. It's used in every major bank and, and many government agencies around the world and provides a very, very robust set of tooling and instrumentation to enable that journey towards modernization and transformation. So that was the kind of vision behind Spectrum Fusion and where we saw the opportunity. So Fusion is, fundamentally a container native software defined really data management layer for OpenShift and also for IBM Cloud Packs, which are built on Red Hat OpenShift. It's designed to provide those mission critical, very robust bulletproof data services for all OpenShift applications. And again, it's built from proven enterprise hardened IBM storage technology. Some of the basic capabilities provides open access to all existing storage and new storage via common CSI interface protocols. Unlike many other, really all other competitive solutions, it provides an enterprise grade backup and recovery solution for container level backup and restore, provides full application resiliency with multimodal replication across zones and regions, provides a very efficient global data platform that abstracts access to block file and object data through a single common framework, and provides very, very simple, very efficient management of these data services. The problem this is designed to solve, we get going back to kind of the, the cultural and organizational challenges I talked about a minute ago, you've got the sort of demand side of the supply side often at odds with each other as customers look to move into this cloud native world. On the demand side, the DevOps people, the CICD people are looking for agility, portability. They want to take advantage of all the capabilities and all the promise of Kubernetes and containerization, the ability to write once and run anywhere. They want to consume services and assets in a very simple self-service way. They want flexibility. They want consistent build models and tool change. On the infrastructure and operations side, you've got kind of the more legacy groups typically that are managing sometimes multiple parts of their infrastructure using different technologies and different tooling. They're capacity challenged in many cases. They don't necessarily have good capacity planning or forecasting. They're absolutely forced to maintain maximum resilience and security and data sovereignty. And they may not really have the ability to optimize the resource allocation to support those needs. So you get this kind of conflict and this disconnect between what the developers are looking for and what the infrastructure and operations teams are able to provide for them in this kind of migration toward modernization. So if we kind of personalize this a little bit and think about two different people and their roles and responsibilities. So you got sort of the developer person on one side. And again, this is a new generation of developer. They're you know working with new tooling and new instrumentation. They've kind of grown up developing in containers and Kubernetes typically. Then you've got the infrastructure and operations team. In many cases, they're working from a more traditional mindset. They've got different tools that they're familiar with using. So these two groups are often, again, kind of in conflict. The development guys don't want to care about data management or storage. They have no interest in it. They just want to develop code. They want to get their applications and services up and running as quickly as possible. They want to have a continuous integration tool flow or workflow where they can get things into production fast. So they get frustrated if they don't get what they need from the INO teams. And in some cases, you know, that's what sort of spawns shadow IT. They'll just go create an AWS instance. The infrastructure guys obviously have to take very careful care and have close care of the production data. They have to make sure that data is being properly stored and protected and secured. They need to optimize capacity because they're typically working with a limited budget in both in terms of the capacity and the financial investment they're able to make. And of course, again, they have extreme responsibility for data security, cyber resilience, and, and sovereignty. So 
the idea behind fusion is that it provides something for both sides. So what fusion does, its core competency, if you will, is being able to expose and present those data services that we talked about earlier as standard Kubernetes operators or custom resources. So in other words, it gives the developers access to very powerful, very sophisticated data services in terminology and language that they're already familiar with. So they don't have to care about what goes on behind the scenes. So they get data services that look and feel familiar. They're easy to consume. They're easy to understand. They can develop using those as part of their standard workflow. They can access data storage in a composable, repeatable way. They get full self-service provisioning. They get all the performance they need. They just have to kind of select some very simple criteria and they get what they need from the infrastructure. Similarly, the INO team gets much higher levels of granularity and visibility. They get a single management plane for all of those different data sources. They get much higher repeatability. They don't have to go through 50 service tickets to provision new storage. So it, it makes life easier for both groups because the development folks can get what they need faster in a more repeatable way. The INO teams get better visibility, more, more efficient infrastructure, better observability, and it just kind of helps everybody get along better and enhance productivity. So we think that's pretty important. So Spectrum Fusion is a software product. However, it is available in multiple consumption models. It was initially released as an appliance simply because by providing a fully integrated appliance with compute network and storage, we provide a turnkey, essentially OpenShift private cloud in a box, very simple to wheel in, uh, zone it into the network. It's up and running within four or five hours and you're provisioning services. There is also a software version which can be deployed either on-prem or into public clouds. So today uh, it will run on-prem on top of VMware. In the next release, we will have both on-prem bare metal deployments as well as supported deployments in public clouds, initially AWS and Azure with IBM Cloud following shortly thereafter and, and Google GCP thereafter. So the idea here is to provide a common framework and a common set of data services for true hybrid multi-cloud deployments from on-prem to one or more public cloud providers uh, outside your firewall. So the whole idea of Fusion is to really unlock the full potential of OpenShift. So again, if you think about Fusion as kind of the perfect hosting environment or deployment platform for OpenShift, you get all of the advantages of portability, so your developers can write the code once and run it on multiple platforms. You get enterprise-grade, military-grade security resilience and backup and recovery. You get existing and integration with existing storage in addition to new storage that's provisioned within the cluster. It's all enterprise hardened, again, based on the same fundamental data management code that has been in the market for a couple of decades and is running the most mission critical workloads and the highest performance computing workloads in the world. You get the elasticity and agility and you get a very robust set of tooling around data discovery and sharing and multiple protocol abstraction and support. So extremely robust set of services again, allows customers to really take full advantage of what OpenShift brings and help them along on their modernization journey, help get them from pilot to production seamlessly, repeatably, at a manageable and predictable and sustainable cost and in the shortest possible time frame. So uh, that's a very quick flyover of Spectrum Fusion. There is much more information available and we will be delivering some additional detailed deep dives on some of the capabilities. Uh, thanks everybody for watching and I appreciate your time and we'll chat again soon.